Okay, yeah, you're right, I did. Um, I can start over. It's, um, of the people who came in, does anybody not know what discourse is? Okay, all right, so then we're back to this. Yeah, it's a web forum um, <laughs> in a lot of ways, um, but it, it also is intended and is a design goal to replace mailing lists, even though it doesn't do it by being like a mailing list. Um, and uh, I, I think, um, this is something I've been talking about for a long time, our, our, our interaction on the internet is buried in uh, mailing lists, which are for old people. Um, and you know IRC, which is for um, weird hacker old people, not uh, so. Um, I think that having a discussion forum that um, kind of fits in with the modern way people use the internet is important for the future of Fedora. And I've thought that all along, which is one of the reasons we have HyperKitty in the first place. So um, not not a surprise. Um, it is also potentially an Ask Fedora replacement, so I'll have a whole bit about that later. Um, it is a fully open source project, but it has a company behind it, um, so there's active development going on all the time, like huge amounts of, amounts of commits, um, and they also have a hosted option, which is nice because um, our infrastructure team is strained, I'm getting nods from Aurelian, um, and having somebody, paying somebody else who is doing open source to do it is like a super everybody wins kind of thing, especially if we can get Red Hat to pay for it, which um, is currently happening. Um, so yeah, uh, this is what it looks like. This is the discussion at FedoraProject.org thing uh, that Sonia stood up. Um, and Patrick and some other people. I don't. Lots of people get credit for this. Matthias could probably get some credit too. Um, and so this is kind of what it looks like as an overview. This one uh, view, kind of top view of the threads this is what the front page looks like here. Um, it's not gorgeous, but it's fairly functional. Um, and uh, I think it's the kind of thing that at first maybe looks a little bit overwhelming, but uh, it's actually gone through several years of like actual interactive. Um, use and um, they're tweaking the design constantly so I think that um, it's the kind of thing that is a little bit overwhelming but once you start using it is actually everything's pretty practical in my experience I mean it's UX is always subjective um, then there's category lists here and we have a bunch of different categories and that's what it looks like you can see up there there's uh, notifications and everything um, you can look at discussion.fedoraproject.org to actually get a better um, view of you know what it actually is live um, and this is a random thread that I picked from just today, like somebody has this, and one of the things that's um, noted is this is marked as solved there, which I think is kind of a useful thing um, for, uh, and like I said, possibly an ask replacement in some ways. Um, and I guess it didn't inline the SVGs there, but um, sharing it, it yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, but if that were a ping image, it would have worked, so, um, okay. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like. Um, this is the what about the HyperKitty thing. Um, they're definitely overlapping goals. Like HyperKitty was designed to replace mailing lists with a modern thing. And I, um, when I, w when we launched this, it hurt Mo's feelings, which I really genuinely feel bad about. I surprised her with it. Um, and I, that was not the intention because I know she put a lot of very passionate work in the HyperKitty design. Um, and uh, so this kind of overlaps that. So putting this at discussion rather than having a hyperkitty thing at discussion without actually having discussion about it, may maybe not the most friendly thing to do. So I regret that. Uh, but anyways, um, part of the thing is, yeah, um, the vision of hyperkitty reached the real the, like that. Uh, and I'm glad that Aurelian is also nodding at me here. That we never were able to realize that vision with hyperkitty. We just didn't have the resources to do it. It really would have taken, you know, a team of three or four or five people, and having those people continually working on it now, rather than getting it to launch and then saying, okay, finally got it to launch. You can work on something else. Um, and we really can't go it alone on this. And um, I know that HyperKitty is a Mailman 3 project and isn't nominally a Fedora-only thing, but there are not a lot of other big HyperKitty installations out there and not a lot of other developers. Is that fair to say? Is that, uh, I wouldn't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, um, right. Um, and I think um, no chance of new features is a fair thing to say because I've been asking for them for like three years and um, 
that's that, that there's just not resources for it. Um, however, we still do need mailing lists in Fedora. I'm not going to kick you all off of your mailing lists. Um, that would not work. Uh, and we still need a mailing list archiver. So um, right now we've got HyperKitty up and running as that, and I think it serves that purpose fine. Um, I've got a couple more slides, pictures of HyperKitty. Um, you know, this is one of the things like. Um, well, right, this is right. So HyperKitty has Postorius as part of it, and that, and that's one of the things. Like, so this is the point I wanted to make, though. Um, Hyper, the link to HyperKitty is the archives. It's not. This is your web interface uh, to your mailing list. This is your archives of the mailing list. So I think it serves that purpose as an archiver better than the crappy whatever Mailman Two archiver was called. Um, because that was horrible. So this is a much better archiver than that. So I'm not trying to kill that. Although I would like to fix this thing right here. Do you know this thing? Yeah. Um, if you click on this sign up link up here, you get, for any list in Fedora, you get told that it's closed, which is not so friendly. Um, yeah, that's probably it. But Yeah. That 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 is. Anyway. This happens for a very good reason. We want with fast, but it uh, there's an art that's artifacts like that. And I think the thing is, we don't have time for you to spend all of your time on the polish like that. And I don't blame you at all for this. Um, so skipping on to Ask Fedora. Um, so this is a Ask Fedora. Is are there people Ask Fedora users? People here in this room. Um, that's too bad. There's a there is an actual community of people who are on Ask Fedora, and I didn't actually make a screenshot of it, but it is a um, Askbot powered um, uh, Q and A forum, and it is basically meant to be an open source clone of Stack Exchange, which, although it is awesome, is not at all open source. Uh, and um, to be blunt, I put it in the slides even, it's a really bad Stack Exchange clone. It kind of is a clone of what Stack Exchange was like six or seven years ago in appearance only and not really understanding how it worked and especially not understanding the user interaction and the community moderation and all the things that make Stack Exchange successful. So we're trying to kind of build a community on top of something that's not very good software for a self-powered community. So that kind of sucks. Um, we had been having our own instance of it, and it was basically bit rotting and becoming very slow and awful and not managed at all. So we have actually moved it to be host, but hosted by the developer of that. Um, but I would not say that that move has been a home run. It is now updated to a newer version. But we had a bunch of feature requests and things that were supposed to be getting development kind of as part of the hosting deal. And that's not really happening. Um, and so that's, and it is, again, it's just one developer working on this. Um, and a key point is Ask Fedora actually, so one of the things about Stack Exchange is it is very focused on you have a question, and then there are answers to it. And every question must be an answerable question, or it gets shot down, whether you like it or not. There's some good and bad things about Stack Exchange there. Um, and it, they really frown on interactive diagnostics, like, OK, have you tried rebooting your computer? Have you tried this? That kind of back and forth is not welcome on Stack Exchange in general, um, where, which is not necessarily great for what we need in Fedora anyways. It's one of the reasons we didn't just say, hey, just go ask everything on Stack Exchange, because people didn't like that kind of uh, feeling. They wanted to actually have something where they could help people. Um, but the AskBot tool is not really great for that anyways. So actually, I think something that is more web forum-like is probably better for what people are using Ask Fedora for anyways, especially with the, the um, You've Solved My Problem plugin and some of the other things that exist. Um, that basically um, other people are working to develop these add-ons for uh, discourse that are useful to us. Okay, um, and then this is the other resourcing thing. Um, Hubs is another project that is dear to my heart, and sadly, we do not have resources to develop. Basically, it is the idea, again, that Fedora's web, inter web presence 
especially, I mean, with our refreshed Git Fedora and the new Docs site and some of these things, it looks a lot more alive than it did. But, you know, several years ago, if you'd look at Fedora, um, your interface to it was the wiki, and the front page of the wiki was not great, and then there was some bit rot like two clicks away from that. And it would be easy to have looked at Fedora and say, this is a dead project, which is awful because uh, even then it was very, very active every day, thousands of, you know, what it, something like you know 1100 IRC meetings every year um, like a lot of activity just not surface so the idea of hubs was to surface that activity um, but um, again we don't have the resources to develop hubs which but that's how it is um, however um, it is possible and so um, one of the things hubs was going to be is kind of the community front end we have get fedora for if you're who just wants to download fedora and then if you want something more than that if you're involved in the project, there's something on the web that kind of is uh, feeds you into where you're going. Um, it is possible, but not necessary. This isn't the only possible answer that um, a discourse forum could kind of provide that front end where every you know, different groups in Fedora could have, even if it's not their primary, like maybe they still work on a mailing list, but you could have a, a landing page on the on the discourse forum that's you know this is the uh, ambassadors you know discourse thing that could then have point to resources elsewhere and kind of be a front page kind of thing that isn't a wiki and is in software that is currently maintained um, yeah so here's the other thing um, I picked this URL discussion at Fedora project org um, and I didn't want to name it discourse because as a sysadmin I've learned never name your things after the software that runs on it um, and I wanted um, the idea was initially to be discussion for a silver blue and for core OS um, and I wanted something that would encompass both of those things and then we thought well why not just make it a wider experiment and see how, how it goes um, so that's kind of the idea we've got this stood up uh, Sonia who's community for community manager for core OS something silver blue I don't know what her actual job is um, is funding this for us for a while so that's a good start and we can figure out how that goes from there and um, that is the end of the things that I have slides for does anybody have any comments yeah, okay wait, wait I'm going to give you a microphone is that microphone on? I'm going to give you this mic. Oh, wait. No, here, you can have my microphone. Thanks. So there was just a quick question. Uh, so this discourse instance is hosted by Discourse, the company. Yes. Is that it? OK, that was just my check. And for the record, the answer is yes, it is hosted by the company. Um, and it is their medium level hosting option um, which I forget what the pricing is we thought we might need to do the top very expensive level um, but Patrick fan found out a clever way to make it make fed messages which was the main reason I wanted to have it be there's like a webhooks thing that it can use so it's generating fed messages with that um, yes Yes. Can you make this work? Uh, yeah, so the question is, can this be embedded in Calper and have topics for every project? I think possibly. I haven't seen it scaled up in exactly that way, but one of the um, places they launched this was, um, do you know the blog Boing Boing? Um, it's a geek blog. Um, and it's, it was briefly one of the top hundred sites on the internet, so it's fairly popular. Um, that was back in nerdier times probably, but um, still. Um, and they switched their discussion forum over to this, so every post gets an automatic topic created that is um, in in discourse. So I think something like that probably could happen in Copper, where you get a topic for every project. Yes, Brian. I have a question. Is this mic on? Okay. Yes, I know the answer. Awesome. Now, now you're the mic thank fetcher you. person. So thank you. 
yeah. to, to whom I should spoke if I want to make it happen. I like just checked some documentation and there is something like enabling embedding. So I guess that it will need some fitting on the um, discourse side. You should go to our discussion at fedoraproject.org and there's a section on there for like what topics we go find find what looks most appropriate for that and post it there okay and we'll see how that <laughs> works <laughs> um. I, uh, some time ago, I have seen a project to have a bridge between Mailman 3 and Discourse. I think that I don't know what the stage of this is, but that may be, uh, it may be possible to relay uh, the Discourse topics into Mailman, so to a mailing list that like a lot of people like to use here. Okay. And so there may be a, so a so technical solution to that if you want to keep people ha having a mailing list. Oh, well. Or should I say, if people don't want to leave their email client uh, to participate in discussions, so maybe that could work. Okay, and I'm used to repeating things, but now you have a mic, you so I don't have to. to repeat. It's amazing. Okay, cool. That sounds awesome. Um, and I, I don't know if the development really started or if it went somewhere, but I know some people mentioned it on yeah. the main main lists. Right. So yeah, one of the things around this is it is a very popular software. Mm -hmm. And um, what was is it Foreman that somebody recently for yeah. Uh, Foreman um, recently switched their mailing list over to using this, um, and they have a blog post which I maybe should have put in the slides. Like they had a very high uh, increase in um, activity switching from a mailing list to this. So I think it was a, a experiment in an open source project that um, shows this can work. Rich had a question way in the back. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> if you would like to put loads of resources into HyperKitty, that would also be awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I just repeat for the uh, camera. So yeah, we've I've seen some small projects using Discourse and still having their mailing list with a bridge works out really well. And uh, inside OpenSUSE, we recently had a discussion about this, and the the two options that bubbled to the top were either Discourse or the one that's currently most popular is uh, adopting HyperKitty. So you might see some contributions from us on that. Yeah, and like I said, I don't think we're going to ditch HyperKitty as long as we still need mailing lists. What? Uh, it's not, okay. Um, yeah, HyperKitty is still going to be important to us for a long time. Uh, one of the things that I'm completely unclear about is how well this would scale up to 200 different discussions going on at once, um, because I think that's pretty big scale. And, you know, we've got, how many mailing lists do we have? Do you know? Um, yeah, there's like 400 mailing lists, and there's obviously a long tail of activity, and some of those in the middle are just spam. Like, um, but um, there are there are at least hundreds of active mailing lists, um, and so I don't know. We can't. Tra I don't think we can translate those all into one uh, one category per mailing list. I don't think that would work, and I don't think that discourse really works with thousands of categories. So um, that is something to find out in the experiment, I guess. Um, MISC. So I do have a discourse instance for our pattern fly, and if people want to <laughs> test, uh, like creating 1,000 categories, I can spin up a VM quite fast, and then we can create a million and see if it starts to work or not. <laughs> because the okay. other issue I have with that is that we are limited by the number of visits. And I do remember having done the computation to see how much we will pay. Uh, but yeah, right now, I think we need to get the enterprise plan, the one where it, they say, you need to contact us, so we say, tell to you how much you have to pay uh, if we want to host everything for Fedora. Just uh, so that you know yeah. before. Um, yeah, so the... the um. Honestly, I thought successful with it. That's a problem that we'll be happy to have. Um. But yeah, and obviously it is open source, and we could look at self-hosting as well. So if we get to the point where it's that, but m you don't you no no to self-hosting. Hmm. So I did try to self-host it, and it took me three weeks to install it, and I did swear a lot. 
Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, paying somebody else to do it is, you know, valuable. And if it takes yeah. you two weeks, you know, uh, no, uh, yeah. it, because right now the installation is uh, you take a container which is based on Ubuntu and I try to make it work on Fedora and it's working, it's not very clean and I know that a Fedora Info is not going to like it as I rather redeploy everything in Java than do that, so, All right, so it will cost some time and resource if we want to do self-hosted. It's like GitLab, we tried to do that in the past and Instead, we decided to just uh, write Pagur. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who get the mic, please hold it away from your computer screens. There appears to be an interference coming off of that. Not mine. That's because we turned your computer off. Um, yeah, I just thought about it, and we will probably run into a problem when we have more than 400 categories, because the category selection <laughs> happens <laughs> when you open a thread, and it will just pull off a list of more than 400 entries, and I'm pretty sure that this is not very convenient to navigate through. Right, yeah, it's not really a problem of can it technically scale, it's a matter of can the UX and user experience scale to that, and the answer is probably no. On the other hand, a lot of our discussion is really fragmented in the existing Fedora mailing lists, and we end up cross-posting between server cloud this and um, you know, test list versus other kind of things. Um, maybe we don't really need so many different lists for things, especially if like some of the project lists like Anaconda patches just happily stay in mailing lists forever because that's fine. Um. All right, um, so that, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do this one. So uh, you mentioned that there's a fed message hook with this course. Yeah, is it working? Yeah. Did yes. So can like we use Fedora badges to make it more popular? What kind of things, what kind of ideas maybe you or anyone else in the room have for different badges we could use? Yeah, um, it also has its own badges, so um, because because the Stack Exchange is heavily gamified, so it kind of ties into that. So I haven't actually looked very much at those badges, um, and I don't know how it, they don't use the Mozilla, the same badges system we do, which would be, have been awesome if they did, because then we just tie it together. But yeah, we uh, there are Fed messages coming out that we could easily tie into our own badges, and we could find some way to link the c two kinds of badges together, or rename something to theirs to not be badges, or I don't know. Um, that, that is actually kind of a problem, um, but we actually already have that in AskBot, because that has badges as well. Um, but yeah, one of the things it does have is, like Stack Exchange, there's kind of a built-in reputation system where you get more power. The more, the more you are active in positive ways on the site, you, you automatically gain privileges to do things like um, you mo moderate other people's messages and things like that, which I think is generally um, positive because it helps, helps empower people in the community to do things themselves without needing to be granted um, power automatically. Um, yes, I definitely think so, although I don't know if we want to rush to doing it because if we decide this isn't working, I want to shut it down in, you know, three months, then we probably don't want to have too many badges. Uh, but yes, Ca counterpoint was, wouldn't it be more successful if we had to take off? So, yeah, okay, let's do badges. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have ideas in the room? I, mean, I I don't know how much people in the room have used this course or not, but what kind of ideas for badges does anyone have any? I have not personally used it, so. There's badges. Yeah.
So what if we did something like <coughs> you earned 5, 10, 15 badges on Discourse? Yeah, that's like a badges. it's which I'm sure you can work with. That's I mean, a that's good pretty meta, but I think people yeah. would be into it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great idea, actually. Um, and also, we who's can filing the ticket? Uh, I c I can do it right now. No, I can't. I have no internet. Sorry. Someone with internet could file the ticket. Does anybody think this thing is horrible and we should not tr try it or do anything with it? Sir. Y y all right. <laughs> no. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's horrible, but I have reservations about it at scale, especially you know thinking about the amount of traffic we have on you know the Devel mailing list and some of that stuff, and then thinking about all the different SIGs. Uh, and things like that, and then when you go and log in, there's you know, 400 or even 100 categories to try and wade through and find the one, the three that you're actually interested in. Uh, I think discoverability is going to be a big problem. Yeah. Very possibly. So I think one of the main issues with discourse is there is no threading. I cannot imagine having a good firmware on that, like disabling KDE, SL Linux, or this kind of stuff. But it's indeed much more friendly for users. I don't know if people already try. When you connect for the first time, you get a bot that explains how to do everything, speak with you, and everything. And I got it three times because I opened three accounts, so by now I know what to do <laughs> to get my first badges. But uh, everything is done to make sure that people do something and learn how to use the system. So. I guess it's good for user-facing stuff, especially since you are not forced to create a federal account system. Someone wants to report an issue, maybe it's overkill to ask for a federal account and just use Google, Facebook, this kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I do not see any project doing development work on that. So you cannot send patches and comment on them. You cannot get threading, forwarding, this kind of stuff. So it depends also on who wants to discuss and where and oh. Yeah, um, I think that it probably like a yeah, patch discussion. Um, I, I don't see those mailing lists that work that way still moving. Although I see most software that used to send patches to mailing lists and discuss them moving to code review tools and things like that instead of discussing on mailing lists, anyways. Um, but yeah, um, actually, I guess we kind of solved two of these problems at once by not trying to move the develop mailing list because that's where the most of the threading flame wars happen and also where most of the traffic is. So um, if we focus on things like uh, you know, the silver blue discussion, the user discussion, um, council discussion, I think would be fine there. Move those things that are um, lower traffic um, that and can we, I'm not sure if we can get that so private forum, because you speak about council. Mm. Like, right. how do we make sure that something stay private and... Yeah, um, there are private discussion, it, that is a possibility, but um, then the admins of it also have to all be in on that being private, um, whereas we've got a more restricted, and we have a council private mailing list. Um, full disclosure, the council private mailing list mostly gets messages when we have new council members where I send a message that says, so you are now on the council private mailing list. We sometimes use this to discuss confidential and secure information, but we try to do everything in the public. And then there's silence on that list for another six months until there's new people elected. So I'm not super worried about that. Every now and then there's something more than that, but that's most of what that what goes on on that list. So. Um, most Fedora discussion should be in the open, even in the council, so. Yeah, but uh, code of conduct, enforcement, and this kind of stuff, security issues, that's legitimate reason to be yeah. secret. Well, and I do not know also, I can take a look, but um, I say that so we can remember that I said that in six months. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Um, um, we've been um, talking about code of conduct issues in PAG or private tickets, um, so. Hmm. Um, 
that again has admin. You can probably read them. I don't know. Um, don't. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to. Um, but yeah, um, the fact that we do have other person makes me less worried about that. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so one reason why we are interested in using Discourse, or why we started using Discourse for Silverblue, was to attract like new audiences, new users who may not be comfortable with mailing lists. I wonder if we have any way to measure that, if we are actually successful in that with Discourse. Um, yes, uh, uh, I. We definitely can again with the Fed message stuff. That's a pretty easy way to do it because I can tie in and I can see are these accounts that are coming in? Are, are people signing up for new accounts and discussing on Discourse? And we certainly, e even though we're making people sign up for past accounts, we're definitely getting new people coming in to this. Although a little bit slower than the silver blue thing, it's kind of a trade off in making people make a fast account. Um, that I don't know. I think it's worth it. Um, also, everybody who's not using, everybody who's using Facebook and Google to log into things, like uh, those accounts can be shut down at any time. Um, Facebook can be like, I would like you to mail me your your uh, passport, please, and then you ca can't log into anything you're using Facebook to log into. Terrible. So, um, in, anyways, that's a different topic, but um, I I don't, yeah. Um, I think that the, that the ability to tie in people who are posting on this to other Fedora activity makes it worthwhile to ask for people to have fast accounts um, alone. Um, and yeah, we can definitely, maybe it, it, I'll re put reports on this in my next flock talk about new contributors that come in this way, which is a good suggestion. Anything else, anybody? We can we can go on early, I guess. Uh, um, yeah, I mean this is obviously a s fairly small group of people compared to all of Fedora, but I definitely encourage you to. Um, there's a section on on the discourse uh, discussion forum there, basically saying what other categories should we have. So if there's something you'd like to try out, um, post there, and we can create some more categories. There's a Fedora friends thing that's just for chatter. Um, Feel free to show up and start chattering there, and we'll see what kind of activity we can start getting, and then see how it goes in real life from there. Um, someone was saying that you know, Fedora should do a better job at trying things and failing if they're not working. So um, I think it's good for us to experiment, and then let's reevaluate this six months next, wh whenever the amount we're paying runs out, and then uh, see if it's worth worth continuing. I guess.